Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests whom we may have in worship tonight with us. As uh, we are in the uh, third midweek service in Lent and our theme tonight in keeping with return to the Lord is return from false witness. Uh, just uh, one thing I'd like to point out as we get to our sermon hymn later in the service, we'll be singing verses of one through four of hymn 420. We begin our service by singing our opening hymn. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and repentance of evil. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. For you answer me. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Teach me your way, O Lord. And lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For all witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your hearts take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your blessing be upon us, Heavenly Father, as we pass through these holy days in which we remember the sufferings and death of our Lord, and grant that as a true and faithful witnesses we follow him in willing obedience. Learn his gracious humility and be filled with his love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading tonight comes from Leviticus chapter 24. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring out of the camp the one who cursed, and let all who hear him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him, and speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him, the sojourner as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading tonight comes from Acts chapter 22. Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, standing by me, said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the hearing of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading tonight comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. Glory to you, O Lord. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. But they found none, 
though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men said testify against you? But Jesus remained silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us, if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to you, to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
my apologies about this sermon, Him. It seems the dash mark I had placed up here fell off. I should have said that before we went into the hymn. My apologies for that. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1996, the Summer Olympic Games were well underway in Atlanta. People from all over the world had converged into that city to participate and watch some of the finest athletes in the world competing in 26 different sports. Eighteen days into the games, Eric Rudolph detonated pipe bombs at Centennial Olympic Park. The blast killed one person and injured 11 others. It was the first in four bombings committed by Rudolph in 1996 and early 1997. Rudolph eluded capture for years, but was finally arrested in North Carolina in 2003. Two years later, he pleaded guilty to all four bombings. But before anyone ever heard the name Eric Robert Rudolph, the FBI identified an Atlanta security guard named Richard Jewell as the person of interest, largely because he was something of a loner and fit their description of their profile of a lone bomber. The media had a field day with it, they were portraying Jewel as a feared law enforcement officer who may have planted the bomb so that he could find it, so that he could be praised as a hero. It was all false witness. Once the dust settled, it was clear that Jewel was, in fact, a hero. He had spotted the suspicious backpack, alerted the appropriate authorities, and helped to clear the area of spectators and 13 or so minutes before the bomb detonated. Without a doubt, the number of casualties was reduced greatly because of Jewel's actions. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done to Jewel's reputation. His name had been forever connected to the Centennial Bar Park bombings. And if you ask people two or three years afterward who that bomber was, most likely they would mention his name, even though he had been exonerated. The Eighth Commandment is simple. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. I would guess that most of you were taught in your confirmation classes that this commandment is mostly about gossip and rumors, that our false witness is most often has to deal with the way that we talk about one another with other people. That's certainly true, but we cannot overlook the fact that this commandment, in its simplest meaning, has to do with what's said in the public courts of justice. And this is exactly what we see in our gospel reading. Our gospel reading takes us to a dark place. Jesus has been betrayed by Judas Iscariot. The temple guards have seized him and hauled him to Caiaphas, the high priest. And all the scribes and elders have gathered. They've decided that they're going to put Jesus to death to protect their own power and position. They are determined to complete this task by any means necessary. As we heard in the reading, now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. It's worth stopping right here to think about that sentence for a moment. They were actively seeking, looking for someone to offer lies under oath with the intention of putting Jesus to death. How evil do you have to be to willingly seek false testimony in order to kill someone? The Apostle Matthew says, They found none, though many false witnesses came forward. These actions clearly break the Eighth Commandment. And its most obvious meaning you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. 
is first and foremost about testifying falsely in court about another person. We can all see the sin that comes out of the trial, but we don't really feel it. Not in a personal way, because most of us haven't ever been put in a position where we have to testify in court against someone else, falsely or otherwise. But Martin Luther reminds us that the commandment forbids all sins of the tongue by which we might injure our neighbor. He writes, It is a common, pernicious plague that everyone would rather hear evil than good about their neighbors. Even though we ourselves are evil, we cannot tolerate it when anyone speaks evil of us. Instead, we want to hear the whole world say golden things of us. Yet we cannot bear it when someone says the best things about others. Our false testimony often consists of rumors and gossip that we say about other people. The whispered, did you hear? And the murmured, you're not going to believe that are too easily said. The half-truths and outright lies that we speak about our brothers and sisters without ever speaking directly to them. The slander and backbiting we too often delight in sharing. We've all broken this commandment, and we are all deserving the punishment of that sin. But even though you've broken this commandment, God calls you to a different path. He invites you to return to him, to turn and leave behind your sins of false witness and see that he has something different in mind. God protects your reputation through the kind words that others speak about you. And he encourages you to be part of it. To know first of all that Christ endured all the false witnesses in Jerusalem in order to reconcile you to God, to win forgiveness for all of your false witnesses. And second, to empower you to speak the best of others, to help protect their reputations, and to always put the best construction on everything. Much like Paul after his road to Damascus conversion, when he was empowered to turn from his own false witness about Christ in order to speak the very best about our Lord and Savior. You too, You get to do this too, all because of what Christ has done for you. Return to the Lord your God. Receive his love and his forgiveness. Turn aside from your sins and serve the Lord with all your heart. He will never forsake you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Please rise for prayer. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil from sudden and evil death, 
from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. In old time of our tribulation, in old time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, and to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way, into the way of truth all who have erred and who are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, and to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. To raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all of our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. We pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be and remain with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Again, good evening and thank you for all coming out to worship this evening, even though it is very windy outside. I don't uh, have any announcements uh, tonight, so uh, have a great evening and have a wonderful week in the Lord.